and welcome to Live at Five. Happy Friday. I'm Beth Stevens. And I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. Happy Friday, Beth. Happy Friday, RLG. We've got a great guest today. We've got we do. Holmes from Junk. Yes. One of one of the best Epic plays thriller. of the season. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So excited to talk to him. But yeah. first, we have a little bit of news. Yes. Uh, so Charlie Carver, a young actor, you may know him from the show The Leftovers on HBO or Teen Wolf on MTV. He is joining the boys in the band on Broadway. Uh, he is going to be making his Broadway debut in the show as Cowboy. And the description for Cowboy, if you're not familiar with boys in the band, is amazing. He's an attractive prostitute who is not too bright. That's a quote. But, you know, that that Same. is, yes. Same. Same. <laughs> and he is g given as a present to Harold, uh, played by Zachary Quinto in the show. Um, great character. Uh, but as I said, he'll be joining Zachary Quinto, Matt Bomer, Jim Parsons, Andrew Reynolds, Robin DeJesus, Brian Hutchinson, Michael Benjamin Washington, and Tuck Watkins in the show, which begins April 30th at the Booth Theater, directed by Joe Mantello, and will open officially on May 31st. I'm so excited for this one. Oh, yeah. I can't wait. What a gift. What a gift. What a wonderful <laughs> gift. For <laughs> us and Charlie Carver. <laughs> and Zachary Quinto. <Quintero. laughs> um, oh, no. More news. So we knew that King Kong was coming to Broadway, but now we have some little inkling of casting because there is a reading, mm. an industry reading. That means we're not invited, that Ryan. That means we don't Sorry. get to go. <laughs> Private only. That is actually this weekend. It's tomorrow yeah. and Sunday. And the stars, I'm going to tell you, are exciting. Eva Noblezada, Tony nominee from Miss Saigon, mm -hmm. Eric Morris, Tom Nellis, and Harley Durst will appear in this private industry reading that we are not invited to. <laughs> um, King Kong, though, has been announced with dates for October 5th. It previews opens on November 8th, and this is at the Broadway Theater. Now, we don't know that this is Broadway casting. This is just the reading. But if this does become Broadway casting, I think Eva Noblesada will have her dressing room. Absolutely. Just, just as so. And Harley Durst is playing the voice of King Kong. Because I it's a realize. gigantic yeah. mechanical it's a huge puppet thing. Animatronic thing. puppet thing. But yeah. I mean, we've seen images of it from the Australian right. production, and it is fabulous. It looks amazing. So can't wait. And terrifying. And Appro terrifying. Appropriately <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> also, um, so we have been hearing about this Jerry Springer the Opera for a while now. Off-Broadway premiere is happening very soon, and now we have some cast. The wonderful Terrence Mann will be playing <laughs> Jerry Springer himself, and Will Swenson, the equally wonderful mm -hmm. Will Swenson, will be starring in the roles of Warm Up slash Satan. Did you so, ever see this show? This is at Carnegie Hall. They did no, I haven't. No, I've only That's seen the I real saw. Jerry Springer show. Oh. I've never, so I'm very... There you go. <laughs> is this, this, this Which is my a family <laughs> favorite we watch at home. Might be a little different, but might not be. Who knows? Yeah, I'm very excited. I can't <laughs> wait. Um, and this will begin previews January 23rd, and it opens February 22nd at the Pershing Square Signature Center. Great people involved. John Rando is directing. Books and lyrics by Stuart Lee and Richard Thomas, and choreography by Chris... Bailey. Joshua Bergas originally did it, was doing it, but he had to step back for scheduling conflicts. So now we have the so much going Chris on, Bailey. that guy. Yeah. Okay. If you live in London, you probably saw Chicago at some point <laughs> because it was there for a really, really long time. It was. And it moved theaters. And guess what? Chicago is going back to the West End. Of course. Because you can't be too long you know out of Chicago. Yeah, you, you need. just need Roxy Hart to be <laughs> you in don't. your midst. So yeah. Chicago will return March 26th at the Phoenix Theater. And, yeah, it's been gone for five years. I feel like, and I'll, I can maybe confirm this with Rick Holmes, that Matilda took over the Chicago mm, Games at the Cambridge. I think you're right. But yeah. I could be wrong. It was in London for 15 years, and it was the longest-running revival yeah. because Les Mis and Phantom are still <laughs> running <laughs> their original still, productions. That's um, right. Yeah, so we don't have any Won casting yet, but uh, there are yeah. plenty of people, Lots of people lining that up to play be Roxy roles. Hart and Velma Kelly with their American accents are amazing <laughs> when they do it over there. <laughs> um, also, as we all know, A Christmas Story Live is happening this weekend Yay. on December 17th. Um, the recording, so they're putting out an original soundtrack album for this live production, and that will be available to stream, uh, get it digitally, on December 18th. So after you see the show, you'll be like, oh my god, I loved all those songs, and then you can go get the album. That's very um, well timed. Right? Isn't very that, well -timed. I mean, they know what they're doing. They're pros. <laughs> um, as we mentioned yeah, the other day on Live at Five, BB Rexa will be opening the production of this version of A Christmas Story Live with that new song, Count on Christmas, from our dear Evan Hansen guys, Benj Pasek and Justin Fall and that will be included on the album as well. So, that song, Worth though, it. is already available to stream or download. You can get that have already. Have you streamed or downloaded it yet? I have not, well, no. Well, you better get I'm on gonna, that. I'm going to get right on that, <laughs> yes. Okay, well, 
We've been talking about Encores in the office a lot, and they are doing Hey, Look Me Over. This is, tell me if I'm wrong, this is a collection of opening numbers, grand finales, and other excerpts from beloved shows. But now we have some casting. Uh, B.B. Newworth, mm. Judy Kuhn, these are some heavy hitters. Carolee Carmelo and Vanessa Williams. Amazing, Do all I need of them. Say, this is no. like it's leading like, lady after yes. leading lady. Some of the uh, shows that the excerpts come from are All American, George M., Green Willow, Jamaica, my favorite, Mac and Mabel, mm. Milk and Honey, Sail Away, and Wildcat. Oh. Some of those more famous than others, or yeah. maybe just in their day. Hard to say. <laughs> Directed by Mark Bruni. Choreography by Dennis Jones. Uh, the show runs February 7th through the 11th at New York City Center. And the encore season also includes Grand Hotel and Me and My Girl. So one is in March and one is in May. Right. February, March, Amazing. and May. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. All of that stuff. What else is up? Um, there are a few things on the site that you should check out if you haven't already. The waitress stars Christopher Fitzgerald and Caitlin Houlihan joined us for a <laughs> round of Never Have I Ever which is amazing. Check that out. Uh, we did a character study with M. Butterfly's Jin Ha. That show closes on December 17th. So Sunday. Make sure you, it's on Sunday. So watch the character study. Get your tickets. Go see it. It's great. Uh, Hugh Jackman, James Corden, Zac Efron, and Zendaya, who are in The Greatest Showman, came together to do one of those crosswalk musicals that James Corden James loves James Corden's to do. only in the crosswalk version. <laughs> it He's is. He's not an actual movie. No. And they do, <laughs> but they do some great shows. They do numbers from On the Town, Guys and Dolls, Fame, and, of course, The Greatest Showman. There's a new culturalist challenge. Your, rank your top ten holiday movies that need, just need, stage <laughs> adaptations. Uh, I'm thinking It's a Wonderful Life would be great, or The Muppet Christmas Carol, but you get to pick your ten. Um, here's some and suggestions <laughs> from Ryan. <laughs> if you were curious where my head was at. <laughs> and there are show clips and photos now that you can see of Farinelli and the King, which opens on Sunday, which you've seen. I have Mark Rylance, yes. Sam Crane. Great, great cast. Yep, fresh face, Sam Crane. And a new play by Claire Van Campen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to shout out to Jake Harris because he asked me to, and this is live. So hi, Jake. Oh, we hi, will Jake. be right back with Rick Holmes from Junk. Stay with us. These artists will come together for only one thing. It's not a concert. It's not an award show. It's SpongeBob the Musical on Broadway. Go ahead. Throw your rocks at me. Baking a pie is easy, if you know how. I'm still standing. If only life were as easy as pie. Waitress is a hit, raised the New York Times, with songs by Grammy-nominated artist Sarah Bareilles, an uplifting celebration of love and laughter. Love, sugar, butter, flour. <laughs> Ben Brantley of the New York Times calls the Book of Mormon the best musical of this century. This was my fourth time seeing it, and they still had me at Hello, winner of nine Tony Awards, including Best Musical. The Book of Mormon on Broadway. You got to get For Carol King, finding the top of the charts was easy. Finding her own voice was beautiful. Beautiful, the Carol King musical. Welcome back to Live at Five. I'm here with Rick Holmes from Junk at Lincoln Center Theater. Woo yes, thank you. The fans are in the house. Welcome, Rick. It's good to be here. I'm so glad that Chicago is uh, moving back to London, as I'm sure Walter Bobby needs uh, the money. Yeah. Yeah, Somewhere. just commenting on the news. Yeah. Um, I like to comment on current events. I like that about you. I like that about you. Hey, congratulations on this show. Thank you. It's been an amazing experience. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. I did see Junk. I saw it in its late previews, right before it opened. Thank you and for it's very coming. enjoyable as far as financial thrillers go. This is the one of the best. <laughs> but no, truly, it's, this is something that people think they know about, but when you dig into it, you really know nothing. This is my assessment. Um, <laughs> it's complicated. Well, you know, there's a lot of info, but... I think what we try to communicate is that that's all secondary to the basic stuff, which is it's a war play. It's like 
It's about love and hate and avarice and greed and fear and And that's why it's so good. Yeah, so So it's, it's, and I think it's like, uh, in some ways, like going to a Shakespeare play where there's a lot of info thrown at you in a kind of vernacular that you might not be, and, and after about 10 minutes, you just sort of, give over to it yeah I, I think what we want people to know is look you don't need to know all the arcana of of the financial world mm-hmm. in order to get exactly what everybody in the end wants or so doesn't. this is about a hostile takeover of a it steel is. company and you are the owner of that steel company i'm being hostily taken over i was about to yeah. say that yeah yeah, it's you don't, you don't seem so upset sounds. about it. It's not as fun <laughs> as it sounds. It sounds fun. Not in a good way. <laughs> you are, are you, is it true that you're the only non-money grubber in this show? Well... Of the leads, anyway. But there's one guy, there's a cop, who doesn't go for oh, the money. Oh, that's right. But, I mean, even my hands aren't entirely clean. Um, I think, you know, what Ayed and Doug, uh, the writer and director, want to say is that, look, we're all implicated. I mean, we all buy stock. Not all of us, but... A lot of us. Uh, we all buy things. We're we all, all buy things. It. You know, we're all implicated in this economy, and the, and and you know, the the play is really just saying, here's what's up. Here's what you're all buying into. You're, you know, this is what it's all about. But I think for me, for me, I'm the you know, I'm the custodian of this legacy of this steel company that was handed to me through no accomplishment of my own. <laughs> right. I just inherited it's a family it. company. And uh, because of the. The, the smarts and craftiness of my grandfather and father. It's been a successful company, and now it's weathering the, uh, you know, the, the times, which is that manufacturing is dying. And, and uh, you know, the, the writing's on the wall, and these guys, these, these hostile takeover, uh, you know... Takeover-ers. Takeover-ers. That's what we're going to call them, yeah. Um, are, uh, you know, they, they know how to exploit it. And so, uh, you know, whether they do that or not, the... the th- the downfall, it's Chekhovian for me. I mean, the, yeah. this thing is coming, and it's there's nothing that's going to stop There's it. a lot to dig in there that makes it theatrical, surprisingly. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's, yeah, it's about family, and it's about, it's about a lot of things that you wouldn't think of when you think I'm going to see a play about, about money or about yeah, the Yeah, don't 80s. think about it that way. That um, and, and, and I also think, you know, this took place in the 80s, but, but it's an absolute origin story for what, where we live now. Yeah. Especially my end of things, which is about the evisceration of this whole part of the the country's economy that has been now fertile ground for the rise of the orange one. <laughs> the orange one. Um, if you can't figure out what we're saying, come on, you it's know what we're saying. Awesome cartoon. <laughs> you should watch. Um, okay, when you first read the script, yeah, how much of a financial crash course did you need to take? And a lot of it, I mean, this is a fast-paced show. It's yeah. not like you need to know all this stuff. I went with my husband, who's a Wall Street guy, who kept on whispering things in my ear because he was, he was experiencing it on, on a different that level. Was him? That was him. The guy whispering and going, yeah. But, um, but for me, not a financial person. I got it right. totally. But I'm wondering, as an actor who wants to dig into it. Yeah. I mean, we got that crash course in a workshop. Ayad is just incredibly knowledgeable. Ayad Akhtar, the, uh, he, the playwright. He, he wrote it, so he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> he's told the story a million times about his father agreeing to pay his rent when he moved to New York to be a a writer and an actor if he agreed to read the Wall Street Journal every day. And so he did that, and he became incredibly knowledgeable the about finance. Deal with finance. the devil. Um, and, uh, but again, I mean, so we, you know, I got a lot of the info about the, the basic sort of junk bond stuff. But, you know, m- again, my end of it is not really understanding right. that. My job is to be completely nonplussed by it and to... Uh, not understand, not have the tools. There's a lot of testosterone on that stage. There is. I, I'm not How as testosterone as some. Oh, really? You want to name names? Some guys are flashing their rings a little <laughs> bit, you know, and their Rolexes. I'm just trying oh, to keep daddy's backstage. company together. <laughs> and that's just a stage door. Weird. Daddy. Weird. Yeah. Poor yeah, daddy. Poor daddy. Um, Alec, Love you. we're going to take a, a question from our Facebook Live l- viewers. Alec is asking Loved you as Mr. Wormwood ah. in Matilda. Thank you. What was it like terrorizing all the different Matildas every night? No, oh, that was a blast. <laughs> I mean, that was super cool. They were a comic they, villain. Yeah, I mean, that was just one of those roles where you got to really like pull out all the stops and have a blast. Right. Green you know? hair. Green hair, two wigs. I will say, I'm enjoying just wearing a suit. I put my pants on <laughs> for the first preview, and and, and Steve Pasquale is in the room next to me. Says, Something missing. Oh. Knee pads, an elbow pad, you know, I was just <laughs> running around falling all over the place. It's nice just to wear a suit and have a cocktail and complain. It's funny because 
Well, I, I, if you want to complain and have a cocktail with us, we are ready for that. Oh, yeah, that's my best thing. <laughs> so just come on over. That's in my, that's is in my ready special for that. skills, my resume. <laughs> it's on complaining and cocktails. Yeah, complaining and cocktails. We're going to rename this show, you guys. It's not Live at Five anymore. It's complaining and cocktails. Um, when you, you know, this takes place in the 80s, but mm -hmm. you're not wearing like super 80s Wall Street, Michael yeah. Douglas type stuff. I mean, I think the idea was we don't want to locate it too specifically so that the audience feels this isn't, we're not all implicated, you know. That right, this is some it's, it's happening story. now. It's really a, you know, it's a story about but where no cell we, phones. how we got to where we are, right? Yeah. No cell phones, though, which is... Different stuff. Yeah, which different is stuff. cool. That makes things too easy, cell phones. Yeah, and now there's a little more regulation. Mysteries are a problem with, with, with cell phones. <laughs> Everybody has too much access up. to information. <laughs> Let's not use cell phones anymore. Come on, people. So when you were in Matilda, you got to... Pull out that old Spamalot British accent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tell me about that. That I learned in middle school. From, <laughs> oh, is that what you're some it? con man in Canada that, that like conned all these people, with, with, made up a whole person that was British. And when he was finally caught, they asked him, what, what, you know, what, how did you decide to make this person up? And he said, oh, it's from watching Monty Python. So, so what kind of um, you know, Christmas gifts do the Python send you since you're part of the family now? Uh, That's I, what I want to know. I uh, I do keep in touch with Eric Idle. That so is just drop that yeah. name. Just go ahead. I just okay. I'm sorry. Did you, did you get that? <laughs> um, I know a famous person is what I'm trying to explain. Just one. Um, I think I know two. Uh, Judy Kuhn came to see the show last night. We went uh, out. So hey, that I'm, I'm, and she was in the news today. See how that's a callback uh, see, to I'm, the news. I'm feeling it. Um, but uh, yeah, so uh, so a dinner really would be the, the thing that I get from Eric once in a while. But uh, no, no gifts. No, you know, I'm not into tchotchke, so I'm glad they're not. I'm glad the Pythons aren't sending me gifts. You did spam, spam a lot for a while, didn't you? I did. I did it for, for a long, long time. Well, it must be fun to be able to do something that comedic, that fun. That disgusting at times. I mean, I'm just saying. Again, that's well, that's <laughs> what I was doing with my, you know, friends in middle school, and to to be to have it as a job was like just an incredible dream. It was such a great show. Uh, and we we had latitude a little bit, or certain parts, um, to to have a little improv and stuff. Mm -hmm. and I mean, it was a kick. It was a real kick. And then I did it at the Hollywood Bowl. Two oh yeah, summers huge, ago. huge. Seventeen thousand people. Wow. If you can make seventeen thousand people laugh, it really it's a real drug. It's amazing. You know? So when you were in Matilda with Christopher Sieber, did you, would you kick back and talk? Oh, talk yeah. We talk about Spam. <laughs> you we were doing British accents again. Oh, sure. We Have were. a little Spam talk. Yeah. He's amazing. <laughs> God. And now you're in this, like, very straight-laced, serious financial yeah. You know, epic. I mean, variety is the spice of life. Okay. We'll go with um, that. Mm -hmm. No, I, I've been doing, I, I've been playing sort of clowny characters for the most part for the last several years so to do this was a real real treat it's nice to see the side of you yeah thanks <laughs> and and you know when i started doing i first did spam a lot i remember somebody coming to me that had directed i think we had worked on on cabaret that i did you know for a couple of years as well not that clownish um not that clownish um at, at least the part i was playing and it's like, oh, I never knew this was part of you. And now people are coming to this and saying, oh, I didn't realize you... Uh, you I didn't know. know this actor could do right. different parts. How weird. That's what they taught us in school. You're supposed <laughs> to be able to do that, apparently. <laughs> That's amazing. All right, people have a lot of Matilda questions. because right. Matilda fire away. Fans. And the question is, funniest onstage mishap at Matilda? Oh, God. I, uh, this was not long after joining it. I have one big number all about... Telly, all about the, how it's... At the top of the second act. Oh, yeah. At, at, all about how telly is so much more fun than reading books. That's right. Um, Keep that in mind, people. And I went up. I got ahead of the orchestra or something. I, I went up, which is, to, for, which is to say forgot the lyrics, and made up a whole rhyming <laughs> version of the song. made up a rhyme song. on the spot? I mean, just trying to survive. It was just trying to stay <laughs> above water, you know? It wasn't but anything kinda, like, it here, not, I'll do something clever. It feels like an improvisational... Number, it feels that the way. audience is sort of still getting right. into their seats. It's not one of these pretty songs either. So <laughs> you can just kind of like rap away a little bit. Yeah. Until I finally, you know, managed to find my way back. I think at one point I, I screamed at the orchestra, take it from the end, which said everything about where I wanted to be, which is like back in take my me dressing to room. The end. <laughs> Please. <laughs> but it was a great treat for. 
-hmm. everyone else in the cast who were glued to the intercoms (laughs) in the hallway like, my God, (laughs) what's going on? This is a train wreck and we get to (laughs) hear it. We get to be here for it. Awesome. All right, another another Matilda question. And then you guys ask questions about Peter and Starcatcher. Ask questions about something else. Okay, um, Peyton's asking, what did Matilda teach you? I don't mean he, I don't think he means the child. I think he means the show, but you can answer it any way you want. <laughs> well, one thing I, lo- I, I learned is that um, working with kids is a blast. I had never oh, really, really they, done that before. They tell you not before. to do that. To yeah, they say don't do that with uh, you know, pets and, or dogs. and uh, They don't have to be pets. They can just be animals. <laughs> Children and animals, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Someone else's pet, maybe. Um, but I found them just fascinating. You know, it's, it's it, not only on stage, but to, but to watch how they handled the whole thing. And I thought Matthew Warchus had a great sort of, he didn't have them go out the stage door. He tried to oh, really? keep the whole thing as normal for them as it could be. So watching them deal with each other and, and with the audience and with us it was, it was really... These weren't just children. These were I like mean, they highly were, talented children. They were, you know, really special kids. Kids who I just couldn't imagine having that kind of, having my stuff wired, you know, that so well. so poised, at right? that. I mean, uh, it's extraordinary. That, that's a good answer. I like that. All right, tell me more about junk. What else have you learned from that? Besides, you know, all the financial stuff. Well, let's see. What have I learned? <laughs> I've learned that we have Japanese toilets at Lincoln Center. Oh, which tell me is more. really Are cool. They, they do everything. They're heated. They do everything for you. It's right, extraordinary. They're terrifying me right now. Okay. No, it's the best. It's the best <laughs> thing. Work at Lincoln Center <laughs> if you can. <laughs> Oh my gosh! I just—that was not the Move answer. Move in. Th- you don't want else. that answer, but that's the answer you got. <laughs> Deal with it. Work um, at Lincoln Center for the toilets. I learned how to tie a double Windsor, which I had never really learned how to do. That was—it D- doesn't come up. You didn't learn that in drama school. Yeah. Uh, no, I just would. Dr- I just you know tie the old single thing. But now the ties have gotten so long, folks. <laughs> stay tuned. Hold on. This is getting really exciting. <laughs> That if you don't do the win- double Windsor, it ends up, you know, looking like a Trump tie. There's my second. Zing. Wow. Zing. Amazing. Um, we're, we're getting political here tonight. <laughs> really what else have I learned? I really, you know, I, I, I've just learned, I think, from reading this book called The Unwinding by George Packer, this, uh, this um, New Yorker uh, uh, journalist who wrote about this sort of stuff that all led up to where we are now, including the subprime mortgage thing and the death of manufacturing in the country to learn you know how we got to where we are where a where 30 percent of the country feels forgotten and and yeah, you know uh, i read angry. that like like i think it's like 60 percent it could be more of this country they do not have 600 dollars if they had to fly across the country and come up with cash they can't do it yeah. they, they do not have that everyone's on credit yeah, and, and, the, and you know, everyone's p- you know paycheck to paycheck. That's a lot of this country. Yeah, and yet we look at the stock market. Oh, the stock market is doing, yeah, it's doing great. great. And you know, for for New York and L.A., the subprime crisis was kind of a speed bump. I mean, right. we got right back on track. Places like Tampa, and you know, it's like still going on. So right. you know, whole neighborhoods were eviscerated. And so I think that's the stuff that was useful for me as fuel to deal with to you know, deal with the sort of sunset of my steel company. Do you think this is an awakening for you that you're going to start paying attention to this more and tapping into your anger and reading the Wall Street Journal? I'm just asking. No, I'm going to tell more jokes. And okay, I'm not going to read the Wall Street Journal, <laughs> but okay. I am going to try to do more grit. I mean, this is, for me, uh, the best part I've ever had on really? Broadway. Really? Yeah. I mean, you had so many good parts you, on Broadway. You can't compare it. It's a whole different animal. It's apples and oranges to something like Spam a lot. Peter um, and the star catcher. It's just not. The visit. They're not. Or the, you know, the visit. The visit was, that was wild. That was like a 95-year-old priest. 45 minutes of, of, toothbrushing white stuff into my hair every night. So, uh, but uh, <laughs> no, a lot of fun. Um. So here's my question. You said that when you were in eighth grade, mm-hmm. you and your pals would spoof Monty Python to each other to crack each other up. My imagination is that is what it's like backstage at Junk. Am I incorrect? It is. It's a lot of fun. They have a whole great backstage there, too. It's not just the Japanese toilets. Please tell us more. It's a nice green room with a fridge and a freezer. And folks do gather and tell jokes to one another about current events and other things. You're keeping um, it very close no, to No, we chest. give each other, you know, a lot, of, a lot of crap. Can you say crap? You can say junk. A lot of junk. Mm. We, well, then... <laughs> That's different. Wait. Wait. Um, no, but it is. A, it's, a, it's a huge 
group. What, there are 23 and people in the cast. Yeah, a lot of them. Michael and most Suberi, of them are men. I did, uh, he was the Arthur on the road of Spamalot and then came in to Broadway toward the end of the run. So I'd worked with him. He's Have you ever tried to do drunk junk with your, your Monty Python accent? I'm just trying to ask the important questions. Oh, well, now there's an idea. Just tonight. try it tonight. I will do that For those of you seeing junk at Lincoln Center tonight, you are in for a treat. You will Daddy, not understand what's happening. Father, <laughs> but father, I don't want to lose my steel company. <laughs> Can't we? It's a totally different take. Yeah. I think you guys should try thank it out. Thank you for that. You're welcome. And thank you for coming in. You guys, see Junk at Lincoln Center at the Vivian Beaumont Theater. See it. This is the very talented Rick Holmes. We will see you on Monday. Have a good weekend, everyone. Good weekend. Good weekend.